2024. Uh, I don't think it's it's been below zero maybe two days this year. It is March 10th as of right now. Yep. Uh, uh, last Sunday, I think it was... Happy Mario Sunday. Day. Mario Day? M-A-R-1-0. Mario. That's what Nintendo says. Oh, well. It's also uh, one of our diehard listeners' birthdays today, so happy birthday to them. Happy birthday. Um, March 10th. Yeah, last week it was 70 degrees. Yeah. Like last a week Sunday. Ago. Yeah, yeah. Today. What the hell? Do you think we we're going to have a extremely humid, unbearable summer, or do you think it's going to be super dry, hot, gross, or uh, a cold, cold Bel- Belinda and I degree? No, Belinda and I were just talking about this. Last summer was pretty mild after the winter was pretty snowy. So I feel like we're going to have a hot summer. Like humid or just hot? Both. Like humidity average above 85 every day? I don't know. I bet I bet we're going to have like a stretch in July where it's like upper 90s for like two weeks straight. Upper 90s. I believe it, yeah. Yeah. I think I predict a extremely humid, shitty summer like that. Do you have references? Are you like going back in the farmer's almanac or whatever? Uh, no, I'm just just making it up. Well, it's like to me, I don't know who would have predicted a seventy degree Sunday in March. Yeah, you know, like I, uh, I don't think anyone was anticipating a brown Christmas. Yeah, I don't think the farmer's almanac was like, you can keep planting. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, like so, um, ground barely froze. Yeah, I know there's a lot of angry uh, ice fishermen and uh, snow machine folk mm-hmm. uh, that are not thrilled about this winter. Um, we were at a, Belinda and I were at a, a St. Patrick's Day party yesterday and one guy there was talking about his his son is in cross-country skiing oh, yeah. and there's only two courses in Minnesota <laughs> that like had man-made snow. Oh. So like... They basically, they would go there to practice and they would go there for meets, but like it was so booked up because every like high school had to use it. So they basically didn't get to participate at all this year. Yeah. Is that, I imagine, I mean, usually north, the further north, the less man-made snow stuff. So I'm imagining it's yeah. in the area down here. Yeah, it's Twin in the cities, Twin cities area. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Super bizarre. It's changing everything. Yep. Um, so I like snow. It sucks. I like, I like snowblower, and I only used my snowblower once this year, <sighs> and I probably didn't even need to because it was like four inches of snow that melted in a week. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I generally speaking, I like snow, but uh, the last three years for me, I've been getting the cold and snow because it's like. It's been all or nothing. It's yeah. like there's been that like pretty snow where it's just tolerable. It's like last year we had ice storms and all that crap. And yeah. then, you know. Yeah, last year was crazy. We got like a dumping of like whatever, 12 and a half inches on, yeah. in one night. And then the next like a day rest and then like another six inches. Yeah. And, That's uh, more snow than we've gotten all year probably. Oh, yeah. That we got in two days. Damn right. When's our la- when was our last? Did we do one in 2024? Yeah, so I just was, like, as I was starting the recording, I saw our last recording was uh, January 6th, so... Whoa! <laughs> so, it's been two months. Damn right. Sorry. What you been up to? No good. Um, <coughs> oh, God. Oh, just, it's been a lot of work. There's been uh, a lot of activity in my homeowners association, uh... You know, as you may or may not know, insurance carriers are fleeing the state of Minnesota. And, I did not know that. Like homeowners insurance? Uh, more so like HOA, like condo associations and, and townhome associations. No, that's news to me. Yeah, so because of all the wind and hail claims in the last six, seven years. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of like they're all peeling out now. Saying like, what the, my insurance guy told me is seven years ago. When all these claims started happening, all the insurance carriers were like, yes, this is like a one-time weird event. Like, it hasn't happened in the last, you know, 
20 years or something like that to mm-hmm. this degree. So they kept everyone kept doubling down, putting their chips doubling down, doubling down. And it's like year after year, there's just tons of hit wind and hail claims and whatever. And so now all the insurance companies are like tapped out. They're like, nope, we're not doubling down anymore. Like this is, it's just like Florida and California. Like no one wants to touch the state for insurance. Hmm. Um, so I'm in a three, three or four building association. And that's where our property value is worth over like 50 four million dollars mm-hmm. and like the 50 million dollar or 40 million dollar mark is where a lot of insurance carriers already say no it's too much mm. too much risk or something um so yeah anyway our premiums t- for comparable purposes uh year and a half ago two years ago was 90 grand a year what they were earlier in 2023 excuse me uh was 640 thousand a year hmm so it's like we had to take out a half million dollar loan to float the association until we could go back to market because we had an open claim, the roof. For the, that's for the whole building, the roof. Yeah, all all yeah. three, all four buildings. Yeah. Um and it, uh, so, but that was also the other thing. This claim was filed in like twenty, either twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. Yeah. And the insurance company was dragging their feet, not wanting to deal with it. Yeah. And so we like brought them to court. We won, and that's ultimately like kind of. The market screwed us now. So now it's yeah six hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. We took out a half million dollar loan to try to protect the you know so we could we had an open claim. That's why it was so high. Yeah. And then the claim closed. You know we try to go back to market and it's like there's two carriers in the state, and they're both like we don't want to deal with wind and hail. So we picked up another one, three hundred eighty nine thousand. Is now our new premium per year, mm-hmm. with better than six forty, but yeah. way still four times as high as a ninety. Yeah, um, and then our deductible for like the roof, wind and hail, is two point six million. Oh my gosh! And so I'm like, why even have this pol- on the policy? Because right. we can buy a new roof for less than that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, so uh, we have to have. I found learned we have to have that policy like or that coverage in our policy um for freddie mac and fannie mae like to, for people to buy and sell units mm. something like that so i'm like okay that makes sense and we'll you know we'd rather just assess the community mm-hmm. to pay for the new roof instead of going through insurance okay whatever the other strategy that we're employing is um is everything working yeah okay the other strategy we're we're imposing is uh well in imp- this is like what we have to do right so uh Condo owners have something called an HO6 policy. Yeah. And so that covers like kind of everything in your uh, in your unit and things that the association's coverage doesn't. I don't know, something weird like that. So uh, our strategy is now to tell all the homeowners to bump up their HO6 policy from like 25 grand to like 100 grand. Mm-hmm. And it's super cheap. It's super affordable. So these loopholes haven't been closed yet. So it's like I picked up an extra fifty thousand dollars in coverage for like an extra eleven dollars a year. Hmm. <laughs> so it's like forty five dollars a year for me for my mm-hmm. hundred thousand dollar coverage. Whatever. But so the strategy is you pretty much do a loss assessment to the homeowners and their HO six policy kicks in after they pay the deductible, which is like five hundred or a thousand bucks. So it's like the homeowners are paying for everything now through their HO6 policy, not, you know, other than their deductible out of their own pockets. So it's like this weird, weird deal where it's like that, that loop will, that market's going to get hammered because no one can afford to do anything. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I've been dealing with that a lot and yeah, and just work and, uh, yep. I don't know. Uh, you went to uh, Montana? Oh, Wyoming. Wyoming. Uh, visited my grandparents. Yep. They're uh, doing doing well. Um, grandpa's 90, 98, 99. Nice. Grandma's like 96, 97 or something. Yeah. So they're, um, they're slowing down, but I was like cutting their water with some Pedialyte to get, keep them hydrated <laughs> and mixing their, their milk with uh, some Boost, which is like Walmart brand uh, muscle milk or, you know, some oh, like really? protein. They, need to, they don't eat a lot, so I, I got to yeah. pump them full of protein and hydrate them. <laughs> 
but yeah, they're they're with it. They're kicking it. So nice, good for them. Yeah, still living at home. That's so. awesome. Yeah, Hot yeah. Man. My my grandpa's ninety seven, and he still lives at home. Hell yeah, yeah. Longevity. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got. We were just at the at the uh, party yesterday. We were talking about how uh, it's like scientifically proven that people that live in cold climates live longer. Really? Yeah. What's what's uh what does science say about that? Like, well, somebody was saying it's because your body breaks down slower because it's cold. But I, <laughs> I think I think that's I think that's bullshit because you think about it, you're inside most of the time, right? Like it's yeah, going to be the same temperature inside here with heat as it is in California inside with yeah. air conditioning or whatever. Unless you're in a constant state of like in like surrounded by 60 degree you know even then it's like you're still bundled up to keep your (laughs) so that's an interesting yeah i I think that's bullshit but that's funny yeah so um i did that uh oh i don't what do you do you have a a list or are you just freeballing it no i figure we're gonna uh take some time to talk about what i've been up to the last few weeks well i did i um well (sighs) I sent you got two bands that I think everyone should listen to. Yeah. Um, should we do that? If you, uh, I have my iPod plugged in. So we did the thing last time where I played some Mac Miller. Yes. Um, but you and I both commented afterwards that it sounded kind of fuzzy. So I, instead of trying to play it through my phone with the adapter, I'm going to try to play it through the, uh, just my iPod because that's the only device I have that has a, a like headphone jack. But do I it. don't know. I don't know if you want to just search up what you want to play. Oh, I, oh. Um, I don't know if this is gonna sound better or not. Zach says it should. He's got faith, but I'm not sure. Yeah. How he, old is this freaking the iPod? iPod? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's iPod Touch. I don't think they've changed the design. They, I think they still sell those, and I don't think they've changed the design in like ten years. But yeah, that's okay. the only that's the only device I have that's not just Bluetooth only now. <laughs> or you have to use an adapter, I guess. Um, let's see. What is this band that you're gonna play? So, so there's two bands, but. One of them is just kind of like this one. I don't know. I found them. Uh, discovered them honestly last night. Yeah. I was just like browsing the internet, updating my resume, just kind of doing stuff like that, and just put on a, a, a uh, what's it called radio. Yeah. On YouTube Music. Yep. Shout out. YouTube um, Music. And this song came on. And I was like, nice. And I liked it, so I started listening to the other songs, but. Um, we can just play this. I don't know. It's called Human Right by The Strike. Humid or human? Human. leave it at that dancing nice. is a human right but <laughs> it does still it does still kind of sound fuzzy don't you think I don't like know. it you're it's, the it's almost like his voice is like I, it sounds like you're playing it off of your phone speaker i don't know I, maybe I'll, you're I, just weird maybe i am but you noticed it last time you just didn't say anything on the podcast yes you said something to me afterwards you don't remember that Oh, I didn't know if it was like if how it was Mac, the song, if it was the yeah, song or yeah, if it was no. the deal. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Which almost it's fair. almost like, um, well, I don't know. Like it's almost like there's not enough treble or there's too much bass yeah. or something. There's something that's 
overpowering. That's... It's like like all of the all of the elements are there. It's just not coming across correctly. Sure. So I don't know. Maybe it's just this cable sucks. Who knows? There's got. Well, I'll, you've I'll been f- playing everything through Spotify, right? Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, but YouTube I don't music. So. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's the problem because I always listen through Spotify, so I should be able to distinguish. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so that's my big update there. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, the only other thing that I would just give as an update for listeners everywhere to see if they agree or just like to hear my thoughts and opinions. Beers at breweries are too expensive now. (laughs) I just bought a beer last week for $8.50. To me, that is highway robbery. Um, What's your your maximum you'd be willing to pay for a beer at a brewery? Like if that's an acceptable price for a 16-ounce? I would say... Knowing what we all know about inflation and all that stuff, I'd say seven dollars is you make it there. Yeah, you that know? was kind of the number I had in my head. Because you got to think. Because I guess where my head goes immediately is if you distribute, it's like everyone's along the way getting yep, a cut, getting yeah. a cut of the margin. So mm-hmm. it's like, what's your margin for a distributor versus that, 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 and then then at the end end all be all at a brew at a bar, you can buy a craft beer for generally speaking seven bucks. Yeah, so it's like. They're capturing way more. You're, they're cutting out all the margin in between and bending you over backwards. Yeah. You know, pulling your hair. Yeah. At least buy me dinner, you know. But uh, so that's one thing. Uh, write in the comments if you agree or if you're accepting to these changing times. Um, you know, because it's similar. I think I, I mentioned this before, but it's similar to... Now all the restaurants, it's like fourteen ninety nine for a burger, just the burger. You don't get fries. The fries are four dollars now. You know, so it's like mm-hmm. you're almost in for a meal by yourself for twenty two bucks. Yeah, you know, and that's without a beer you or ever a been drink. To, you ever been to Malone's in Maple Grove? I have. They have really good burgers. Yeah, I, I, I got a wrap there once, and it was good. That, yeah, uh, Belinda always gets a buffalo chicken wrap there. Yeah, I think I got that. That's like probably the best buffalo chicken wrap I've had in the Twin Cities. And it's big. Like it's big, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, like fifteen ninety nine. But you get fries with it too. That's yeah. the other thing. So it's yeah. like I think whatever, it's however you skin that cat. Yeah. yeah. Um I'm trying to remember what burger I get there. The good one. Yeah, it's good. It's so good. It's like double decker or something. Nice. Yeah. But cheese and yeah, I don't know where it's going with that. I think I said I had another thing, but I think it's just. I'm a pushover, so I'm going to continue going to breweries. Because, like, what other place can you go, hang out, have a beer, bring your dog? It's pretty fun. Church. I don't think you can bring dogs to church. They also like if you put, like, a cool vest on it that says, like, you know. They only serve wine, so. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> you put a cool vest on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else other than. So just wanted to get that off my chest. Yeah. So uh, I talked to you on the phone a few weeks ago, and I asked if you wanted to come over that weekend, whatever, to record a podcast. This so this would have been in February sometime, because it had been a while, and you were going to Montana, and I was like, oh, okay, sounds God. good, and. Uh, that weekend, I ended up going to the emergency room twice. I went once on Saturday. So I'll, I'll go through the whole timeline. Wednesday after work, I got home, and I was like, man, my stomach hurts. Like, I was like, I don't know if I'm just constipated. I've never been constipated before in my life, so I didn't know what it felt Good like. for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, this sucks. Like, it hurt, my stomach hurts so bad. And I just like... Alyssa gave me a hot pad, and so I just laid on the couch, and that seemed to help. The next day, I woke up. I was working from home. Everything was good up until, like, Thursday night, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it hurts so bad. Like, it, the pain was, like, in my, was like, abdomen into my back, Ooh. and it just was, like, radiating into my back. It hurt so bad. 
So that was Thursday. Friday actually wasn't too bad. Oh, sorry, the pain was it like like a giant a ache that continually got worse? Was yeah. it sharp? Was it no? Like, what is the pain like? Not sharp. It just was like I would start to feel it, and it would get worse and worse and worse, and like uh, it got to the point where like actually okay, so I lied. Friday was bad because I woke up, I felt okay on Friday. I was getting ready. I was gonna. I had to go to the office, so I was driving, and it just came in, and it was hurting so bad. And I like, I made it like 15 minutes from home, and I turned around and I had, I like, just drove back home, and I got out, got in the car, or I got in the house, and just like basically passed out on the couch. Like I couldn't, like it hurt so bad I couldn't move, and so I laid on the couch for like two hours with a hot pad, and then finally I was able to like move. But I was like rolling around. It hurt so bad. Um, then the rest of the day, Friday was okay. I woke up on Saturday and it hurt really, really bad. I woke up three times in the middle of the night on Friday because it hurt so bad. So Saturday morning, went to the emergency room and they're like, they, uh, they're like, might be a kidney stone. So they did a urine test. There was no blood or anything in the urine. And so they're like, well, it's not a kidney stone. And they're like, we could do a CAT scan, but it's a lot of radiation. It's probably just an intestinal issue. Because they're like, the, the doctor goes, the left side is the boring side. Because like your appendix and everything <laughs> is on the right side. Okay. So the left side is just intestines and kidney. Okay. Um. So he's like, I think it's just an intestinal thing. Just take a bunch of laxatives and try to flush it out. I'm so like, you shut your brains out. So I'm like, I'm like, okay. So it sucked because like I wanted to know what the problem was, right? But they they didn't tell me. And so rest of the day Saturday was okay. Just laid on the couch with a hot bed. Um, and Sunday morning I woke up like 4 a.m. Tons of pain. Hot pad. This is the first day the hot pad didn't help at all. And I was like rolling around, rolling around. So I'm like, I told Alyssa, I was like, I gotta go back to the emergency room. I got to get a scan because, like, I got, like, there's something wrong with me. And so we went back, same doctor's there. He's like, okay, let's give you a scan. And actually, Sunday morning, I was in so much pain, I threw up. Whoa, that's, yeah. That means, I mean, that's serious pain. Yeah. And then I, then, like, they gave me a scan and everything. I threw up again <laughs> at the ER. And after the scan, they're like, yep, you got a kidney stone. <laughs> I'm like, I was, like, kind of, like, just like i was happy to know what the problem was plus then they like gave me an iv and gave me some drugs that like after 10 minutes the pain was basically gone nice. so it's like okay thank you. like this is so good and then um they said it was 6.9 millimeters and i'm picturing how big 6.9 millimeters in my head is i'm like that is huge yeah it is and can't pass that yeah <laughs> unless so, you got a garden hose for a hole <laughs> so the doctor was like was like if it's not gone like if you don't pass it after a week call this urologist and go in and then the doctor left the nurse was like you should call him tomorrow like what the hell so what a i'm sorry but the doctor knows how big that is right yeah he knows you can't pass that shit yeah so that's what the nurse said she's like basically five millimeters is the line where everybody agrees, like, less than five millimeters, you probably can pass it. Cool. Yeah. More than five millimeters, probably not going to pass it. So I was like, okay, that's good enough. So uh, there's a cardinal. Oh, yeah. Um, Pretty. Looks just like my little cardinal. Oh, you can't see it. My little cardinal I got on the front of the coffee table. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I got in to call the urologist i went and saw them on that friday so this had been a week and a half now that i've been dealing with this yikes and so the the drugs they gave me was basically just like aspirin they gave me like some actual narcotics i never ended up taking them but they gave me aspirin and they gave me a drug that is called tamsulosin it's supposed to open up your your reader okay so here's the here's the biology your what your what your reader so your kidney has a tube that goes down to your bladder. That's called the ureter. Ureter. Yeah. Okay. So you go. So the it grows in the kidney, has to pass through your ureter into your bladder, 
and then pass out your urethra into the toilet, right? So right. your your you can picture how big your urethra is. Yeah. <laughs> your ureter is half the size. Ah. So Oh, so it never made it to the bladder. No. It was just stuck in your kidney. It was stuck in the top of my ureter. Oh. So the the <laughs> drug they gave me Tamsulosin is supposed to prevent inflammation and expand your ureter. Oh, interesting. So it's okay. easier to pass. So that's why I think the doctors like maybe there's a chance you could pass it. And it's also possible that it can like once it's dislodged from your kidney and there's like the fluids from your kidney flowing past it can break it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so then it's you may you may pass a, a kidney stone without even knowing you had one exactly. kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm making that up. But. Yeah. Uh it's yeah, that is it is possible. Um not in my case. So <laughs> I went to the I went to the urologist on after a week and a half. They said and actually so with the drugs they gave me and the tamsulosin, like I actually was able to manage it pretty good for that that week, whatever. Did you how about, did you sleep through nights or did you? Uh, usually at least once a night I would wake up with some pain, but okay. Is it only when you had to pee or is it just there? No, it's pretty random. Interesting. Okay. It's whenever the stone is moving around. Gotcha. And my stone was so big that it didn't really move around that much. I mean, but that's bigger than a marble. Yeah. So. Sorry, continue. So yeah, the ur- I went to the urologist and they're like they're like, Okay, so here are your options. You can get surgery to have it removed. You can just wait to see if you pass it. And Thursday I went on Friday to the urologist. Thursday was the worst day I'd had. And I was like, After yesterday, I'm ready for surgery. Get this thing out of me, right? So Yeah. <laughs> uh this part's gonna be kind of graphic. Cause I'm gonna describe Well, we can't be uh talking about your wee wee here i'm gonna well why not we already have you know what yeah let's do it so there's gonna be a lot of i'm I'm probably not gonna bleep anything out because i'm gonna use medical terms so it's okay oh um so yeah so they scheduled me for surgery another week later so at this point it'd been two and a half weeks by the time i get to the surgery okay and the other thing that you're all just told me is I'm not allowed to take the pain meds that they've been giving me. Oh, for the because so you're I, going into surgery. Yeah, so I had to take I had to take just Tylenol. And um yeah, so two and a half weeks in, still have pain every day. Still like can't really move around much and go into the surgery. So what they do I think the the actual term is a cystoscopy with a ureteroscopy. So what they do is they go in through your urethra with a camera <laughs> and into your bladder and then into your ureter and travel up your ureter until they like find the stone. Are you awake for this? No. Oh, I, was, okay. I was knocked out. So Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um at least for that part. I'll get into <laughs> I'll get into the part I wasn't knocked out for. Okay, so and then they blast it with a laser to break it up. And they remove as much of it as they can. And then they put a stent in. So it's basically a tube that's coiled up in my kidney, travels all the way through my ureter and coiled up again in my bladder. So that after the surgery because they're rummaging around in there so much, they don't want your ureter to swell shut. So they put the stent in to prevent it from swelling shut. Okay. Um, so yeah, the surgery was fine, obviously, because I was asleep. Like obviously. I was knocked out, and um, I woke up, went home, and this whole so, time. So wait, did they they just broke it up. They didn't remove from there. So no, they broke it up and removed it. Oh, okay. Yep. So it was all a whole big deal. Okay. Yeah, and we'll do. that. Doctor, so you, but you had a stent still in. Correct. Your body when you went home. Yep. So it's all done, but... Yep. Okay. That doctor said that it was actually 9 millimeters, not 6.9. Oh! <laughs> so if you picture a 9 millimeter bullet... Whoa. ...coming out of your urethra, now imagine a tube that is half that size. Like, he's like, it was wedged in there pretty good. There was no way it was coming out. Oh! <laughs> he, he actually... So I was knocked out, or I was, like, coming back... And he was talking to uh, Belinda and I at the surgery center, and he called it a BAS. 
And in my brain, I, I was like, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the hell he meant. Because he was just like running by and he goes, yeah, it was nine millimeters. And <laughs> I was like, oh, that's big. He goes, B-A-S. And I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? And then he just goes, big ass stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mom's uh, kind of dark. Yeah, he was pretty funny. <laughs> Um, so then, yeah, so I had to keep the stent in for a week. And when I was at the urologist, they were like, they're like, yeah, it's kind of like a bell curve. Some people can barely feel a stent. Some people say it's worse than the kidney stone pain. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, day one, like the whole time I had the stone, a lot of people pee blood, right? I didn't at all. But with the stent in. It was really bad, especially at first. Like, and so you had blood. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like <laughs> oh, a lot. Oh yeah, and um, yeah. So the the first day, like the first night I got home, obviously I was still like kind of loopy. The next day I woke up, I had to pee. It hurt so bad, like out of the urethra or like yeah. where the the kidney area of your body. No, just like just my urethra it was like burning pain the entire time like it got to the point where uh that whole first day i was scared to pee like it hurt so bad that so i just want to for some listeners i guess this is how i well i'm trying to understand right yeah would you say you know you know how uh like if you have like a cut on your hand and you like put lemon juice yeah, and stuff, exactly and like, like that. salt and lemon juice and stuff. So, but like constant out of your your urethra. Yeah, while I'm urinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's not fun, guys. And then it like then it like after I'm finished. It, oh, you have the the okay. Sorry. Then it like the pain just kind of slowly fades away over like ten fifteen minutes. Okay. But it yeah it was so much pain. But after a couple of days. It didn't hurt nearly as much. I was still peeing blood for the whole week I had the stent in. Do they give you like a, just out of curiosity, do they give you like a uh, a color card to say like when too much blood in your urine is too much? Like, no. you know, where it's like red versus brown versus... No. They just said like, you're going to pee blood, you're fine. I guess they just like, I think it's just kind of like, you'll know if it's excessive. Like if it's just your straight peeing blood, like. It's pretty obvious, but yeah. Yikes. Okay. Um, but the first couple of days after surgery were definitely worse than I thought they were going to be. Okay. And so on the bell curve of like the stent, it actually wasn't that bad if I didn't move around. Like if I did move around, I would start to get like the back pain, ah. abdomen pain again. Um, so I basically spent a week sitting at my desk to work and with a hot pad and then after work i'd lay on the couch with a hot pad like basically yeah and so then so then this gets us to last friday so two days ago uh i had scheduled to get my stent removed and so i go back into the urologist the same doctor that did the surgery is there and he's like all right you ready and when I get there, like, the nurse is like, okay, what are you here for? I said, getting my stent removed. She's like, all right. So she starts prepping. And I'm not joking when I say, like, you picture a large tube of toothpaste. They had, like, four of those just labeled lubricant. With, like, masking tape. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. And these giant, like, vial, like, syringe vial things, like, as big as, like, the tubes of lubricant. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. And obviously, I understand what they're about to do. Like, I have a tube that goes from my kidney to my bladder. I know their entrance path. And they got to go in, somehow grab onto it, and pull it out. Right. And you're like, you're going to knock me out for this, right? <laughs> no. Well, I knew they weren't. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. Ah! Y- yeah. So. Ah! So. uh the doctor says, he's like, all right, you ready? And I'm like, yep. And I'm not joking. When I was there before before the doctor came in, I heard someone in the next room over screaming. <laughs> like screaming in pain. And so I'm t- 
I'm just terrified. <laughs> did, you, did you ask the nurse, like, is he doing what I'm doing? <laughs> no, I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know. <sighs> um, so the doctor goes, all right, you ready? Here we go. And he starts, like, talking to me. He's like, yeah, I'm Greek, and we're having a party <laughs> later today. They're bringing in Olive Garden. <laughs> and at this point, I, I watch him take out this, like, long... I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a metal straw or something. Or? Yeah, it was like a metal straw. That's about the size it was. And then at the end, it's kind of tapered and gets bigger. Almost uh, like, almost like, I don't want to unplug it, but uh, did, almost like this this connector for the microphone, right? Okay. Um, uh, sorry, real quick question though. Uh, did they give you anything for like they pain so, or discomfort or anything like valium or anything i mean like no. d- are you you're just you're going raw on this uh, no i'm going raw and i <laughs> so i took some talent all that morning and um they put some numbing stuff on the end of the the mechanism that they're inserting oh interesting so is that okay i have so many questions but yeah keep going um i don't want to hijack so, your story <laughs> so he's talking to me about olive garden and he inserts this metal straw inside of me. <laughs> and he's got like, <laughs> so he grabs the end that's tapered bigger and he puts it over his eye. So it's like a camera or something that he's just stuck inside me. Oh, is he like, is he close to like your hips with this eye thing? Or is no, he like standing up like? The metal straw is maybe like a foot and a half long. Okay. okay. So th- I was laying on a on a bed and that they had raised up. So he was sitting and oh, so he's at eye level. <laughs> not quite, but yeah. Okay. He's he's got some distance between my okay. body and him. Oh. Gotcha. No, understood. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so he's looking through the camera and he's talking to the nurse, and she must have been controlling the the claw that opens up and closes to grab the to try and grab the the stent, and so he's like, he they must have like those. Uh, syringes that he had the large syringes filled with liquid i think it was some kind of lubricant okay. because i i was not watching i was staring straight up at the ceiling right but i could feel them like putting liquid inside of me it felt like i had was to it pee. warm no it was not warm oh, okay. i felt like oh. i had to pee right so i think they just like filled my bladder with this lubricant okay so that they could more easily pull the stent out anyway uh he's talking to me and then he's talking to the nurse. He's like, okay, open, close, open, close. So I'm guessing she he, she was like opening and closing the claw as he's trying to like maneuver it around inside <laughs> of me to grab onto the stuff. Like air traffic being like, are the wheels, <laughs> can you see the wheels? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's like, okay, I got to twist it. So I, it's just like moving around inside of me, right? And I can feel it. I can feel everything. And... Uh, pain pain discomfort like what would you how would you describe it like it was not okay so this is this is about to get really graphic i'm just trying to describe it in a way that everyone can understand you know when you take a really big poop and it's like you feel it like kind of sliding along your colon like outside like it, it's it's like pressing out because it's so big you know what i'm talking about it feels like a I pressure. I want you to keep going, but I think I know what you're talking you're not about. I don't think I don't think the listeners know, but please keep going. It's like a pressure pushing out, like if you picture the cylinder of your rectum. The poop What's a cylinder, is, huh? Well, I, I don't know. I'm just picturing it in my head, like as the poop is sliding out, you can feel it pushing, expanding your rectum. Right. That's what it felt like in my urethra. But going in. But so just, like a like, reverse just like poop? moving around, just like moving around. Um, yeah, the whole time. So almost it's like, like a pressure instead of a yeah. Like a, I mean, I would call it. It was it was very a re, a reverse relief pressure. Yeah, it was very okay. uncomfortable. Okay, but so discomfort. Yeah, it okay. didn't it didn't really hurt. No. Okay, continue. Um, sorry. But he's like, okay, deep breath. And to I, you or the nurse? To me. To me. <laughs> And I just, I, I don't even think my breath was that deep. I think I was like, <gasps> shallow right? breath. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, all right, here we go. And he just like pulls it out and then he holds it up like it's like a, like a trophy fish. And <laughs> so I was telling, I was telling some of my friends about this and they're like, how long was it? 
like a 28 inch walleye. I was like, no, nah, I bet it was like 14 inches plus like the coils on the end. And then my one friend goes, you're joking, right? I'm like, no. So I Googled it. They're like 10 to 15 inches long. So yeah, he's like, you want to keep it? I was like, not a chance. Dude, I, come he was on. Joke, he was joking, I'm sure. But. I don't think so. You don't. Yeah, so, and then like the at the urologist the first time i went they were like yeah so when they remove the stent a lot of people say it's like immediate relief and it really was so that i did that on like nine o'clock on friday morning and like 11 o'clock on friday when i got home i took my dog for a walk and i was like this is the first time i've like actually felt good for three and a half weeks i was gonna say this has been like a four week ordeal right yeah like holy yeah. cow and that thing's i mean so then let's talk about timeline then how a, a stone that large yeah how you i guess one do they know how it formed and stuff because i mean to me it's either that's a long period of like a year and a half i don't know how the body works yeah. right but like that size sounds like a long time yeah um or you had some serious like life changes like you're like i'm vegan now and then you <laughs> Like started eating, I don't know. Is it a calcium deposit? What is kidney stone? So, zone? so uh, there's different types. I think the one that's like the most common is a calcium deposit, maybe. Okay. But he said that. Um, so I asked him how long it takes to form something that big. He said at least six months. At um, least, so it could be longer. Yeah. Okay. And so then, when they extracted it during the surgery, he said he kept a piece that was big enough that they could send it to. Uh, get tested to figure out what it's made out of. And I have. Do they charge you for that, or is that like part of the the deal? I have no idea. If I'm being honest, I've only been charged. I've only gotten one charge so far. Uh, it was a big one. It was the facility charge for the surgery center. That one hurt, and I'm sure like, I'm sure I'm gonna get charged for my two trips to the emergency room, including, yeah, the uh, CAT scan. Well, um, maybe you'll, I don't know what your insurance lo- looks like, but hopefully you'll hit a deductible and everything's free. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I, w- I will say <laughs> the the facility charge for uh, the surgery center was more than my deductible and they build insurance. So I wonder if there's like, it was like just slightly more than my deductible. So I wonder if, um, yeah, I, but I don't know because... I don't know how any of that stuff works. I guess I'm going to find out. But I, w- I had went to the emergency room, went to the emergency room and got a CAT scan, went to the urologist, went to the surgery center, went back to the urologist. So that was like, what, five trips? I've only mm-hmm. been billed for part of one of them. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I I guess I don't know what your insurance is, but with all those charges back to back to back and how slow the healthcare system moves with charging yeah. and running it through insurance... I wouldn't pay anything until like it, the dust settles, yeah. which may take a, a month, honestly, a couple months because yeah, I don't know. Again, well, but then there's all sorts of weird shit with insurance. Sometimes it's like, like I get the stuff where it's you hit your deductible, everything's free. Yeah. And then it's like the other things is like, uh, there are some insurances out there where your deductible is lower, but then it's like everything's 10% copay and all that yeah, shit. Exactly. So it's like, you know, I don't know. There. It depends on your insurance, which yeah. I don't know what it is. So, yeah, but I have a high deductible health plan, so it's like hell yeah. So, you got an uh, HSA you contribute? I do. Yeah, that's gonna save me. You max that baby out? Um, I did. So hell yeah. Last year I maxed it out, or two years ago, I don't remember. Um, but then I used all that to pay for my uh, my LASIK. So mm. I've already I've already got a bunch of money still in there yet, but. Um, yeah. So, amen. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, my. So first, they don't have the results yet. No, don't have the results yet. Okay. But I did tell him that my dad had a kidney stone. Um, I don't know, ten years ago or something. My grandpa, my dad's dad, has had four. Yikes! So he goes, "Oh yeah, it's just a genetic thing." Aw, it's like that's a disappointing answer. I know, but so what he told me was, uh. Eat less uh, salt, drink more water, and put lemon in your water. And Costco, so we found these actually when I 
first got my like kidney stone. Costco has this uh, lemon water, mm. zero sugar. It's very good. This one's it's watermelon flavor. Real lemon. Wait, what? Lemon water with watermelon? Yeah, it's uh, purified water by reverse osmosis, organic lemon juice, organic natural flavors, and organic stevia leaf extract, and vitamin C. That's all the ingredients. Nice. It's, and it's delicious. So, probably gonna keep drinking this stuff. Straight on. Yeah. Good. Good deal. Yeah, well, damn, I was hoping we'd get to the bottom of, you know, if you were drinking too much beers or no, he's like something in the water. Like, or do you drink a lot of pop? No. Um, What else did he ask me? Everything he asked me, I said no. So. But you don't know what he asked you. He's He was firing questions at me. Very do fast. you drink a lot of soda, drink a lot of coffee, drink a lot of water? Well, coffee's actually, so they gave me a list of things to avoid. Yeah. Like, one of them was grapefruit juice, but coffee's actually good. Like, it's the opposite of the stuff that makes it form. Amen. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I'm glad you're back to 110%. And Yeah, so, okay, so I should say this. After the, uh, after the stent removal, he was like, yeah, it's going to sting for, like, today. It'll just slowly get better and better. This afternoon, you'll feel pretty good. Tomorrow morning, you'll feel perfect. And it was basically dead on. Even, like, I bet by, so that was 9 o'clock on Friday. I bet by 2 o'clock on Friday, I felt perfect. Like, Dang. Yeah. It's pretty cool, like, to be, like, I spent three and a half weeks where I felt terrible. And then just flipped a switch. Oh, yeah, this is what it feels like to feel good. Like, yeah. yeah. So, just, uh. Not a, a thought experiment, or uh, I want to know. What do you think people did with kidney stones of that magnitude? You have like, no idea in, how much. Honestly, I like about before 1920. Like I'm just thinking, because it's like medical advances are pretty freaking top notch where we're at now. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Like Benjamin Franklin, just like you just get super hammered and like throw a key on a lightning rod kite thing and be yeah. like, ah, like. I'm going to shock this out of my system. Yeah. I've honestly, I bet if it was bad enough, it could get infected and you would die. That's probably what happened likely a lot of those folks. Yeah. Well. So yeah, I almost died. (laughs) Not actually. I mean, kind of. It's not fun. Wouldn't recommend? No. (laughs) Would not recommend. Yikes. Yeah. And I Um, think honestly... It could have been much worse because, like, my stone was so big that it didn't really move around that much. Like, if I if I didn't move around that much, it didn't really move around that much, you know? So, I could control it a little bit. Would you say you have big stones? I think so. The doctor said I had big stones, so Hell it's yeah. medically factual. He's like, man, everyone usually gets knocked out for this part, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Wow, yeah. Um. Oh, I got a fun fact for you. Sure. Well, not fun fact. Sorry. Are you finished with? Yeah, your... uh, I think I think I'm ready to beat it on. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're you're good. Um. So, Blue Chew Advocate. <laughs> yeah. I I'm doing the uh, I do it twice a week now, but it's a pre I do it as a pre workout. Crazy. Yeah. You get very vascular with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> you got I no words. You. No, I I mean I'm telling you, it it's super expensive. The and science I'm... makes sense. Well, it started as a heart medication. Is that true? Oh yeah, I think I did. Vi- know that. I guess Viagra, I should say. Yeah. So Viagra, Blue But it's Chew. the same it's the same active ingredient. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh Sildenafil, I think, or Sildenafil. I think that's the one. Sildenafil. Um But yeah, I just um it's okay, misconception that it just gives you an erection, not factual. It's like you have to still be in the mood for that to do its deal. Gotcha. So when you go to the gym, there's, for me at least, I'm not aroused at the gym. So <laughs> it's like I get the, the other benefits of just vascularity and like a pump, really. So um, Maybe pump's not the right word. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a exercise term. You pump the, the muscle gotcha. full of 
blood it's flushed you know um i don't know what to say but anyway blue chew advocate yeah um i so am you trying were gonna to try different brands right well so here's the deal so um blue chew is super expensive it's just a chewable form so whatever it's super expensive for comparative purposes because so background history too viagra was its own deal until it's the the patent runs yeah. out and then it becomes generic so well they have 25 years of patent protection that ran out, so now everything, it's generic, so people can just make their own brands. Blue Chew is the active ingredient in Viagra in a chewable tablet form. So it's like a nard, it's technically generic, but it's, again, uh, whatever. Uh, pardon. So uh, so it's generic now, so everyone can make it. Yep. The Blue Chew, for reference, frame of reference, 20 bucks gets you six pills. It's a steep price. So for, three week supply. For me, yeah, three to four weeks, depending on how often I take it. I only take it twice a week because, again, it is a heart medication. You only I take it leg day? What's that? You take it leg day? I take it leg day and uh, and uh, arm day. Yeah. Like to get yoked in the gym. Um, but uh, so uh, but so for comparative purposes, 20 bucks again for uh, six pills or whatever, mm-hmm. chewable tablets. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drugs or whatever his website is yep. for generic stuff. For he, you can get a higher dosage. It's not the chewable, t- but it's a pill of the same thing for thirteen dollars for ninety pills. Oh my gosh! Five of that thirteen dollars is shipping. That's insane. Yeah. So, shout I'm, out Mark Cuban. Yeah, shout shout out Mark Cuban. Um, this is where how much of is it like double dosage or like how much of a higher dosage? So I think the blue chews that I take is like either twenty or twenty five milligrams or yeah, whatever yeah um on mark cuban's website i think it starts at 20 30 and 50 okay. for the dosages so if i were to do could get mark cuban's thing i would start at 20 yeah just because it's like i don't need 30 or 50 it's like yeah. um because I, and i did a lot of research the research i found i guess was it's more psychological when it comes to like impotence and stuff is like you feel like you have to rely on it but that's where mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm fine because I'm using it for exercise. I'm not popping the pill before I'm active. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I, <laughs> I don't have it in my heart to lie to my physician and say, I have ED. That's the only way they'll prescribe it. Oh, really? I reached out and said, can you prescribe this to me so I can, uh, you know, it's for my exercise. I don't have ED. She's like, I don't recommend someone taking this who doesn't have ED. <laughs> and I'm just like, can I tell you to just prescribe it to me i'm gonna do it anyway kind of thing and she wouldn't so uh, you could spend like 50 bucks for like an online consult with like a nurse practitioner and then they'll prescribe it fun fact you can't transfer your prescription from blue chew to any other pharmacy they say it's blue chew is like whatever it's it's bullshit it's like commercial or something well it's just like it's a bs thing because they're prescribing you medication yeah based on a questionnaire that says you know you're healthy pretty much yeah and i'm like transfer this to a different pharmacy oh it's only for the specific like a chewable tablet not and blue chew is the only one in the market that does it Hmm. and generic doesn't do chewables so i'm like okay that's bullshit but so again i could spend 40 bucks and get like an online nurse practitioner and just be like prescribe me blue chew i could lie yeah but again, then I'm like, do I want to lie? I'm already doing it to get blue so you, chew. I guess. So you can't get the cheap ones from Mark Cuban's website unless, unless I get a prescription gotcha. from a nurse practitioner or whatever. Gotcha. In which case, the legitimate ones, you know, will not prescribe it unless they you say you have ED. Yeah. Which everyone's told me just lie and say you do, so you can get it. And I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like a weird deal because. Yeah. And then I guess for my next annual checkup, I'm gonna have to say I take. <laughs> Sildenafil recreationally. <laughs> it's not really recreationally because you're doing it for a purpose. Like yeah, and, I, not and I'm not I'm fun. not abusing it too. That's my biggest yeah. thing is like, I'm not taking it daily. It's like right. twice a week. It's like a Tuesday Friday situation. Yeah. So it's like I I feel and I'm no doctor or no whatever, but I feel like that's not a, enough time to build up in your bloodstream. So to make it a thing. I got know? a question for you. Okay, I got an so, answer. So 
I'm sure at some point in your workout life, you've taken pre-workout, right? Yes. And there's like an ingredient in the pre-workout that's supposed to do the same thing, like increase your blood flow. Yes. Right? Yep. So how would you compare, like, is it is it significantly better than the pre-workout stuff? Great question. Uh, first off, they recommend with Blue Chew, if you're taking any other, uh, what is it? Nit- is it nitrates? I think, I don't know. It's something for like old people with heart problems or something like to... You know, like if you're, you feel like you're having a heart attack, you throw something under your tongue or something, and it dissolves. Mm. I don't know what that is. Sounds familiar. Yeah. But, you know, it says, yeah, if you're taking other nitrates, you know, you might have an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Um, mm. And so I looked into that a little bit because um, I do, my pre workout isn't like, it doesn't have caffeine. My pre workout yeah. is, uh, it's actually beetroot mm. and it's, uh, it's got nitric oxide in it. So it like it does open up your heart a little bit for more blood flow. Um, I've not mixed the two because I don't want to just yeah. add to the flame. Right. But but to compare to your to, I notice a little bit more vascularity. But again, there's a lot of factors involved too. It's like what you eat. You know, like you're not just gonna all of a sudden vein out. You know, it's like I don't know how to describe it, but. Do you think it's? I, I got a little flustered in my cheeks. I could tell. Oh yeah. You think part of it is like like you were saying a mental thing. Like just oh. you're trying something new, so you're excited to see if the difference is see, there. Like. And so yeah, that's a great great point, great question because I've also in the last like three months started changing the way I exercise, um, just to kind of lean out and be more. I don't want my knees are falling apart, my elbows are falling apart, so I'm just yeah. trying to be work out a little different and doing more cardio stuff, but I have noticed. And again, this is where I shoot myself in the foot. Cause I'm all about like tracking and managing like changes and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you, sometimes I, I change my diet. I change my exercise routine and I add something else. I've haven't taken before example, blue chew. Mm-hmm. And then, so it's like, I start noticing results yeah. differently right. and I can't, is it my diet? Is it blue chew? Is it, my new exercise routine like i can't pinpoint which one because i've added too many variables right and i i beat myself up because i'm like i'm hardcore about that right so yes i don't know maybe bluetooth is just a psychological i think it does that stuff but yeah again i've i guess for me like i'm noticing more veins in my arms and shoulders that i've never seen before in my entire workout career so it's like but again i'm also changing my workout routine so it's like who the hell knows i don't know yeah i'm not gonna say i, I kind of want a t-shirt that says blue chew they're like 15 bucks <laughs> <laughs> wear that in the gym see what anyone says um but, <laughs> but yeah awesome. but yeah uh i don't know it's uh it's super should, interesting you should get the shirt and then rip the sleeves off <laughs> just have a cut off in the gym and yeah. just be yoked and everyone's like looking at you like this yeah. blue chew shirt man yeah well, I ha- definitely have to because chir- shirts that cheap are not of high quality, <laughs> yeah. just to be clear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So um, that and I guess, yeah. Thank with, you for the update. That's, yeah, I'm, absolutely. It's very I, interesting. I think everyone should try it for at least a week with exercise. I don't think if you're going to take it like, oh, I want to see how it does with my, you know, what it's intended for. I do not recommend that, to be clear, yeah. unless you got ED, I guess. But yeah. um, that's a you thing, not me thing. I'm no doctor, but. I think I might schedule a like a nurse practitioner. Yeah. Uh not my regular one. Just a one you can buy them online. Like a a one on like a You, you should uh, check with your health insurance cuz a lot of them offer like free uh I don't know I don't know what you call it. Consultations. consultations? Yeah, like remote video consultations. I should yeah. do that. But anyway, so I just I want to I should explore that option cuz again, 90 pills for $13. Versus six pills for 20. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm no math magician, but. Yeah, exactly. But anyway. Uh, you are a bean pusher, though. Bean counter. Bean flicker. Bean flicker. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. Um, I, I really, there's not a lot going on. There's just this weather. I'm not complaining. Nope. Um, I honestly, I, the, the S word, I'm not going to. I feel like that's going to jinx us. The SP word or the SU word? S-N-O-W word. Oh. What the hell were you thinking? Spring and summer. Oh, no. 
S N O W. We're still in March. Yeah. So we usually get a, a decent snowstorm in April, but like yeah. it was like year. nineteen degrees this morning, so Ooh. Yeah. I did I did uh never mind, I'm not gonna say that. It's gross. Urethra? No, it it was a a, a dog related incident outside, so No. Oh, gross. Oh, did she eat her poop on poop? No. Okay. All right, I might as well just say Yeah, that. come so on, man. <laughs> yesterday, she had this dump that was like, it, it was like a cow pie, basically. Nice. And I was like. Oh, so it was like very, kind of like spittled out like a, uh, it wasn't like a log. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was like, that thing is disgusting. I'm not going to try to pick that up. Did you have to wipe her butt? Because she's got nope. a hairy butt. Okay. No. Nope. I don't know how, but her butt never gets poopy. Good for her. But, uh yeah, she had this, like, it was just disgusting. And I'm like, I really hope it freezes overnight. So this morning I went out and I was like, frozen solid. Hell yeah. So Very good. Well, yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. This um, has got to be our most gross episode ever. Some would say the grossest. The grossest, yeah. Well, anything else other than your situation? Well, you got any trips planned this year? Do we talk about this? Um... You know, I don't, well, a couple of weddings, but that's about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm excited for you and Belinda to come down to Sioux City, Iowa next month. I don't think we're going to. Dude. Well, I, told I guess, what is your, what can I ask publicly? Is your reasoning because you, you quote unquote can't drink like you used to? Because uh, we're not going to just be drinking. We're going to be eating too. We're going to have a good time. We're not like we, we're not the young bucks we were 10 years ago. What I told Dallas is I spent I've already spent enough time in uh, Sioux City for one lifetime. Oh my gosh, were you yeah. touched in a bathroom or <laughs> something? Like why? Uh, not that I know of. But that's maybe worse. You're scared that you were and that you might again. Yeah, it's just tough. Like, like I don't with know. the dog, I guess. Yeah. With the dog, yeah. Well, you can give her to your parents or something. Call Belinda's sister down to watch the dog for a weekend. Never know. I'm gonna say probably not gonna happen. <sighs> Dude, the squad is like it's like 15 people now. Yeah, that's too many. No, it's not. That's too many people to try and coordinate a thing with. A coordinated assault. Coordinated assault on Sioux City. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna assault <laughs> Sioux City, Iowa. No, doctor said I can't have any salt. Good. There's no. There's, it's a salt-free community down there. So you're bringing the salt. I am I'm more spicy than I am salty. Is that right? That's hey, right. I got a question for people that are watching this. Did you notice that we are in a different studio than we have been in previously? That's super interesting because I'm now I'm looking at it and if I'm trying I'm picturing in the other thing. I couldn't tell, I don't think. <laughs> no, other than the, there's better light. Yeah, there's more light here. Even though it looks uh, like it's coming from your end more than mine. We got a we got a nice window here giving us natural light. But this is the same. This wood stuff, this is a different color. That's the only thing really I think that would be a very noticeable difference. But I oh, put yeah. up the pictures and stuff the same. This was in the other room. Six, 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 six. I even put that box over in the corner over there, same spot it was in in the other room. Oh, yeah. Didn't know I was there. But I don't know. You, I don't even know if you can tell on camera, but this is a little wider this way. And the camera is set up more at an angle where before it was, like, basically straight on to the center of the couch. But A perfectionist points out every flaw. Yeah. Never. I guess, like, there's there's a little bit of room I could move the camera over to get it more centered, but... I think it's fine. Oh, perfectionist. So that's why. That's probably why this uh, table looks a little crooked in the picture. Haven't you? Well, anyway. I got nothing else, my man. Yeah, me either. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. We didn't really accomplish much other nope. than kidney stones. Yeah, I accomplished keep, a lot. Uh, keep a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Nine millimeters. Yeah. It's huge. <sighs> it's like freaking like this big. Oh. Yeah, I hope... Uh, I hope they give you more of something definitive, like it's because you eat so much salsa or something. Like you know, like they, there's a reason for it instead of like drink more water, less salt. It's like yeah. that's such. It's probably true, but it's like not the answer. At least me seeks. Yeah. It's like tell me I did something crazy. Yeah. The doctor was writing me notes, right? 
and he's just like Dr. Scribbles and he's writing. He's like, follow up in one year. And he goes, yeah, this F you, that means follow up, not F you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A breeze. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's have a good rest of March and stuff and we'll catch you, you here in a couple of weeks or something. Yep. This was a requested episode. We had uh, by a couple people reach out and say, hey, you haven't had an episode since January and it's March. And I was like, yeah, we've had some issues. Yeah. Had to change the oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to speak. Yeah. So straight on. Well, all right. Uh, till next time, y'all. Yep. Peace. Peace. Peace.